If you go look at the best players in the world, they'll all have a slightly different posture. Now, here's the key thing when it comes to posture, and here's where I see a lot of people get it wrong, is you have to match your posture up with your flexibility levels. Now, there are a couple of key things, again, that we are gonna go through that are sort of non-negotiables, but from there, we can kind of adapt it to your body type. So, for example, if you are somebody who sits down every single day at an office, in a chair, you've got very tight hip flexors, trying to copy Rory is going to be the worst thing for you. you You'd want to copy a golfer who's a little bit more senior, like a Lee Westwood. Or if you are somebody who is super, super mobile, then you can have a slightly different posture to a Lee Westwood. In fact, you can go with a little bit of a straighter back. So what I wanna to do today is go through the non-negotiables first, sort of the key things that we gotta see, and then we can go, okay, we can adapt it to different flexibility levels. So today is not a, you have to set up like this. It is a, these are the key things that we must do, then these are the things that we can sort of personalize to you. Key number one to a great posture is making sure that your lower back is in a neutral position. Now with modern day society, as I said, a lot of people are sat down all the time. This makes our hip flexors very tight and sort of switches them off in a sense. So as a result, what we tend to find is a lot of golfers get into what we class as this anterior pelvic tilt. Anterior pelvic tilt is just a fancy way of saying that your pelvis is tilted forwards excessively and that there's a lot of curvature in your lower back. Now the issue with this is this creates a situation where it becomes very, very difficult to rotate. So as a result, when you get into this position, your body is either going to just swing itself with the arms or your swing is gonna look like this to where you early extend forwards, your hips come underneath you in an effort to get them back to a level position to then where they can rotate. So actually we're always gonna come out of posture if we're in the anterior pelvic tilt position for number one, safety reasons, because otherwise you're gonna ruin your back, and number two, to actually get us back into a position to where then we can rotate. In terms of how we're gonna fix this, very simple reference guide, we're gonna take the belt buckle and the belly button. So when I go into this anterior pelvic tilt, it's as if my pelvis is tilting forwards. So the, the gap between my belt buckle and my belly button feels like it's been stretched apart. Now, if I tuck my pelvis under, I feel like I'm bringing my belt buckle closer to my belly button. If I do that from this angle, you can see I've got it tucked forwards. If I then go and tuck it under back into a neutral position, I feel like I've closed the gap up between my belt buckle and my belly button. Now, if I do that in my posture, I go into the anterior pelvic tilt position and then I go and tuck it under slightly. You can see two things have happened. Number one, my lower back is flattened, which is perfect. And number two, my hips have also come underneath me just a little bit more. This is gonna put me into a position to where I can just rotate way more freely. Key number two to a great posture position is having good balance points. Now, firstly, what are balance points? The main one that we're gonna use are where are the armpits, knees, and balls of the feet all in relation to each other? Now, firstly, a good balance point position would look something where if I drew that line straight down from the armpits, that it would gently touch the front of my knees and it would extend all the way down to the balls of my feet. This is gonna put us in the best possible position to where we have good balance, but that's going to allow us to be mobile and ultimately from there we're not going to have to make compensations throughout the swing to correct this. Now quite often we'll see that players who set up with incorrect balance points by the time they get back to impact their bodies have naturally corrected it. This usually comes in the form of some sort of early extension. So for example if your balance points are too far back what would that look like? That would look like when at address if I drew that line straight down from the armpits you would see that it's behind the knees and back of the balls of the feet. How's the body going to fix this? Well, it's probably going to have to rock forwards in order to get the armpits, knees, balls of the feet back into a good position. That now means I've gotten closer to the ball. That's a one-way street to hitting the shank, coming over the top, doing a whole heap of bad things. And now one of my favorite checks for this is you can do this at the driving range. It's simply just set up to the golf ball, get into a good position. And before you pull the trigger, just grab that golf club with two fingers and just pop it into your armpits. You should be able to just let that club hang and it should just touch the front of your knees and go all the way down to the balls of the feet. But if you're in this position, you're then going to be able to rotate way more freely and get back to the ball in a great position. The third key to a great posture is where is the center of our hip joint relative to the ankles? Now this one's a little bit harder to do, so we're gonna give you a good reference guide. So I like to just go from where the seam line is on my trousers at the back of my pocket right here. If I draw a line down from this position, I would want to see that that line roughly goes over the center of the ankles. If you're somebody who has too much knee bend and ultimately from there you stick the butt too far back, you can see that's too far behind your heels. And if you're somebody who's potentially not got enough knee bend and you're a little bit sort of 
or straighter with those legs, you're gonna see it's gonna be in front of your legs right there. So just making sure that when you draw that line straight down from the back of the pocket, that is pretty much over the center of the ankle joint, that's gonna put you in a great position to where again, you can make a nice athletic motion, lower backs in a neutral position, knee bends good, balance points are good. Now you can rotate and know that you're not gonna to have to thrust your hips forwards, back your hip out of the shot in order to correct that poor posture that you had at address. Let's now bring this all together. Now it's all well and good knowing what the three keys are, but we've got to give you a drill that is a step-by-step -step guide to ensure that you find the perfect posture position for you. So what I want you to do is go up to a wall. Right now I've got two alignment sticks here. If you're on the drive range, this can work just as well, but I would prefer a wall as it's going to be a solid object and that's going to make sense in a second. What you're then going to do is you're going to stand straight upright and you're going to position yourself so both of your heels are about a clubhead width away from the wall. Now the reason why I want it to be a wall is that if you're that golfer who gets too much knee bend and you stick your butt way too far back, you're not going to be able to do that. Imagine this is a wall set up to right here, one club head width away, standing nice and tall. Now, from this position, you can see my hips are in a very neutral position, which is perfect, and the legs are straight, arms are up in front of me. From here, lower your arms down until they feel that connection with the chest. And then nice and relaxed here, you can see I could just bounce them ever so gently. Now, from this position, keep your hips level, your legs straight, and try and not push your hips back as you do this but what we're going to do is we are going to round forwards gently until the club touches the ground so you can see my lower back's flat my upper back has a softer man around in it and then from there I can then soften my knees to the point where the front of the knees is over the balls of the feet and from here I'm in the perfect position to rotate and rotate I have now taken out all reasons for me to make compensations when it comes to balance and posture because I'm now in the perfect posture position so like I promised you at the start of the video I'm going to run through the part now where we can sort of have a little bit of flexibility in there so one of the biggest varying factors you see out on tour is the upper back and how much they tilt forwards. So with the upper back, some players will try and get it a little bit straighter, even in the upper back. Again, Adam, Scott, Rory are great examples. Uh, but other players, even like Victor Hovland and Matt Wolf, who are younger guys, have a little bit of curvature to that upper back. Now, what is the point of that? Which golfer does it fit for? Well, if you are somebody like Adam, Scott and Rory, who are extremely flexible athletes, they are incredible athletes, then yes, you are naturally going to have more flexibility. You can sort of have your shoulder blades a little bit more together. Now for the majority of golfers, I wouldn't recommend that. So I would actually recommend more of the Lee Westwood, Victor Hovland, Matt Wolf posture where, you know, you go with a little bit of soft round in the upper back. That just gives you a little bit of space to go into what we class as thoracic extension in your swing, can just aid you in getting that little bit more rotation. The other thing that's sort of up for grabs is how much you tilt forwards. Now, height does play a part in this, but the more you bend forwards, so again, kind of get into that Adam Scott Rory range, the more you start to bend forwards, I believe the harder it is to rotate and we can see the, the data backs this up. Reason being is, put it this way, if you have your club on your shoulders and I said, right, bend forwards as much as you can, keeping your back straight. Now try and turn, turn as far as you can. It's gonna be extremely difficult to turn versus if I said, right, stand straight up and turn, it's gonna be way easier. So which one would you rather favor if you're the golfer who is stiffer? You'd rather favor getting taller. If you're less mobile, favor taller with a little bit around. If you're more mobile and you, you feel like you can handle it, go a little bit more bent over, a little bit straighter upper back. So this is why when you look at the best players in the world, you see a lot of different variances in there, but they all have a lot of the similar features. Balance points, lower back, and the hip joint position relative to the ankles. Those are sort of the non-negotiables. Everything else is sort of left for play again depending on your flexibility levels your height things like that so hopefully you've enjoyed today's video if you're struggling with your posture and you need more one-to-one -one help i offer online lessons please go check them out on the skillist uh, app i'll leave the link down below you can get a lesson with myself anywhere in the world if you have any questions about today's video drop them down below if you've enjoyed it please give it a like and subscribe and i hope to see you back here soon